Hey everybody, Resident Loser Jeremy here. Today I want to talk about opening a studio. In one of my last videos, opening a studio, the things I wish people had told me, it's gotten pretty popular pretty quick for the amount of time it's been on YouTube, at least for my videos. The thing that surprised me was the amount of people who Facebook stalked me, you know, went to my studio's website, emailed me, messaged me. I've gotten a staggering amount of messages about people who are opening studios. Uh, for some of you, it's a career choice uh, and it's just time to make that move. Some of you are being forced into it. A lot of the questions I'm getting are very similar. And so I wanted to talk about that. So this one is gonna be how to turn your hobby into a job. Here we go. So again, if you guys don't know me, I'm Jeremy, the channel, Recording Studio Loser. The whole idea behind this is that we're learning through failure and specifically through my failures in my career. But in this video, I wanted to talk about opening a recording studio with the context of not really going at this the traditional way, I guess. I think the only real way to do this is to give backstory on myself. Graduated from grad school in 2009, really hard to find a job. If you're around for that time, a lot of you probably were given the analytics of the videos that you guys are watching. By the way, most of you guys are not subscribed, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button. But if you remember back to 2008, 2009, it was really, really hard to find a job, uh, especially if you were new to the market and somebody fresh out of school it was pretty impossible. Uh, I went for business. I didn't go for audio. I was trying to find a job in HR. I literally sent thousands of resumes. Um, I was looking through them the other day when I was clearing off an old hard drive and the amount of resumes and cover letters was surprising to go back and look at. I had something like 1600 resumes. Um, around the 800 mark, I actually took my MBA off of my resume because it was more of a detriment in finding a job than it was a help. Out of all of those, I got one interview. I only got one. One in-person interview, two phone call interviews. That's as far as it went. I got nothing else. I was scraping the barrel to find any amount of work I could. So I was kind of forced into doing whatever I could to make money. And what I had was my musical abilities and a collection of recording gear. That turned out to be how I paid rent, how I paid for my food, how I paid for gas in that time where I was trying to find a job. That went on for a long, long time. Just constantly making records for people. Eh, maybe if I get this, I'll make the next record a little better. Uh, now I need a better computer. Now I need blah, 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 blah. It kept going on. And now I'm in a recording studio, commercial space, 3000 square foot with awesome gear. I love what I do but it wasn't really what I planned to do. Don't get me wrong, I love my job, I love what I do. I'm thankful that I get to do this every day. But that to say, some of you guys who are messaging me, don't get your heads down. You may be forced into this. It may be happening not in a way you anticipated, but that doesn't mean it's not gonna work out. Some of these things, Take it with a grain of salt, because this is my experience in this. Everyone's experience is going to be different. Your background's going to be different. Your natural abilities are going to be different, though I don't think mine were anything special, if I'm being totally honest with you. A lot of the records that I made first off were not great, but all that to say how to turn a hobby into a career, one of the first steps you have to do is volume. Make as many records as possible for as little as possible that it still makes sense for you. For me, that was making records very cheap. Oftentimes I was just, you want a full record? How about a couple hundred bucks? I learned a lot. I got paid very, very little, but the amount of work I was doing made sense. I was young, I didn't have a family. All I needed to answer to was myself so I could afford to put in that time. Now for you, this may be different. Now, I could not see myself doing that, really. I wanna spend time with my kids. But again, it depends how bad the situation is. If you have a supportive family at home and you know you can make ends meet, even charging less for records, maybe that's the answer for you. Spend the time with your family that you can, just know you're not gonna sleep a whole lot. Volume, volume, volume. Make as many records as possible with as many different people as possible to figure out what you're good at. Some of the records that I thought I would be awesome at did not end up being my strongest suit. Since then, I've learned a lot. I've become a much more well-rounded engineer, but my initial thought of where I would fit into the market was not a correct assessment. You'll realize once you start doing this how quickly word of mouth spreads. Never talk bad about your competition and don't discount those kind of chance meetings. One of the things as I was taking notes on this video, I reflected back on kind of those records that were a turning point for me. 
The first project I ever did for somebody that wasn't like a friend was a chance meeting I had at a guitar center of all places. <laughs> this guy was buying uh, a lot of really cool gear. I noticed him there. I noticed him playing. He was really good. I think he bought a Soldano that day, which uh, little did I know I'd be recording that amp not so long, not so far down the road. I was there with either my friend or my roommate at the time, and we were just talking about the fact that I was recording some friends, and I, w I think I was there to get guitar strings or drumsticks. I don't remember, but I wasn't there to unload a lot of money, and I think we had just mentioned a recording studio, and this guy approached me. He's like, Mike, do you own a recording studio? Looking back on it, I was like, why did this guy buying all this crazy equipment approach this dumpy looking fresh college grad who looks like he's in his pajamas just happened to mention the word recording studio? Long story short, I recorded with that guy. I recorded a few records with him. Those records and because people talk have turned into, I was trying to figure it out and write it down, probably about 40 to 45 projects for me. And if I look back and try to pinpoint a turning point in my career, it was the fact that I decided to go to a guitar center with my buddy on that particular day. And it probably changed the entirety of where I am now. I'm not sure I would be here doing what I'm doing if I hadn't gone to that guitar center that day. I don't know what knowledge is in there, but don't discount those little things and treat everyone as if they are the most important client you will ever work with. That's the only thing that got me gigs back then. Cause uh, trust me, it wasn't the quality of the recording. It's probably the combination of how cheaply people could record with me. And I'd like to think it was that I, I'm a nice guy <laughs> and I'm fun in the studio. I don't know. Go ask my clients, they'll tell you. Know that there are gonna be just as many flaky clients as there are important clients. And this is a detail I'll get more into on how to get your clients to actually pay for this stuff, how to charge, how to price your that's gonna be one of the next videos. So go ahead and click subscribe now so you can see that. But just like you have those clients who are gonna turn into 40 to 45 projects down the road that you happen to meet in a music store along the way, you're gonna have those clients who just vanish into thin air. And if I took every one of those flaky clients personally, I would not be doing this anymore. It is personal. That's your livelihood and you gotta be hungry, but you gotta look past it. If you need to dwell on it, dwell on it and go quick. This is something you gotta get through fast. Take it, learn from it, and then let it go. That's something that took me a long time to learn. And I probably spent too much time self-loathing and just kind of pouting that really distracted from some good work that could be done. So can you actually turn a profit doing this? I've had a lot of comments on some of these videos uh, where people say, don't do it, get out, you'll never make money. I'm here to say that those comments, that may have been those people's experience, but all you're reading are the YouTube comments. I think it's total BS. For the fact, simple fact that I've been doing this for a decade and I'm making money at it, I own commercial property, I own my gear, I know a lot of people who are doing the same thing. There's more than one walk to this. You don't have to own a location. You can be a mobile producer. One of the favorite producers that I work with is a completely mobile producer. A lot of the people in the industry I know don't own recording studios, and that's totally fine. You can have your own setup and work out of different studios. Decide what you want to do. Do you want to be more production? Do you want to be an engineer? Do you want to have both? But turning a profit, totally possible. Now I said volume in the beginning, turn on as many records as you can, as cheaply as you can to where it still makes sense. Maybe in the beginning for you, you can actually take a loss doing records just to get that. And there are instances where that is a good option for some people. If you can do something really, really cheap and make a really, really good product, oftentimes the word of mouth that floats around, the things that that band says about you after that project is done, or if that band goes on to really be somebody, that does more for you than having charged a couple hundred more dollars for that project. That said, there's a time in everybody's career where that no longer makes sense. I'm in the position where I don't really do that anymore. I don't really take projects for under what I feel like I'm worth. That's a really cocky statement, but we're talking about money and we have to talk about it. To take this to an extreme, as an illustration, there's only so long that you can charge 20 bucks for a mix. And there's multiple reasons for that. It's one, it's not sustainable for you. It doesn't show the client that you value your own time. And without fail, 
Some of the projects that I've had the worst experiences with are the ones that I've given severe discounts or the ones who I took a lot off of the total in order to work with them. Uh, not all of them. Because they weren't paying what I typically charge for a record, they didn't respect the process as much as some other people might have. There's definitely something to be said about pricing yourself the correct way. And I'm gonna talk more about that in another video. Start low, knowing that you're gonna ramp up that price. And the cost for recording for you is gonna go up because you're gonna get better. You're gonna get better clientele as you go. And the more you charge, the better equipment you're gonna get. And that equipment can help you make better records or make records faster. There's a big mindset shift that has to happen when you decide to do this as a job or to start making money from this, even part-time, you need to get over the fact that you're not gonna like all the music that you're gonna record. Don't get crappy about not giving people their files. Don't get upset if they want somebody else to mix the project, but hopefully you've had that conversation in the beginning so you know what the project entails from, from the beginning to the end. So nothing is a surprise along the way. But if you wanna prove to somebody that you're not professional enough to work on their stuff is when you get into the nitty gritty about not giving them their files. I've seen this argument on forums all the time. Should I give them their stems? Should I give them the project files? Yes, it's their files, they paid for it. At least that's my view. I have no problem giving somebody their files. In fact, before people leave the building, I asked for a hard drive so I can dump everything onto that hard drive. I can kind of understand the reluctance to do that. However, these are their files. Don't feel like you need to keep this from them so that they come back. Quite the contrary, anytime that I've gone above and beyond for somebody, given them everything they need, done extra bounces, they always come back because they know you're gonna treat them right. If you nitpick over every little single detail, then you can really shoot yourself in the foot. There is a point where you have to respect yourself and your time and realize when somebody's just taking advantage of you. So there's definitely a balance to it. Patience is the last one. You have to be patient with your clients. You have to be patient with the process. You have to be patient with yourself. You have to constantly focus on what is important and why you're doing it. If that was, this is your career choice, it's gonna be a little easier for you. This is what you wanna do. This is your passion. Keep at it. You're gonna fail along the way. You're gonna mess up. That's okay, keep going. If this is something like me, you were forced into this situation, you love doing it, maybe this didn't go exactly the way you planned, it's gonna be a little harder. And I can kind of feel for you. Just know that there is kind of an advantage there. Uh, not that you wanna be vindictive. I think the illustration is when, a, when an animal gets cornered. That's when they're their most dangerous. You're forced into a situation like this and you're hungry and you know it has to work or you don't even wanna think about what the other option is, then you're gonna make it work. You're gonna pull those late hours. You're gonna put your kids to bed and then go back to work. <laughs> You're gonna be there to take them to school and then go to work. If this is what you have to do, you have that work ethic, you can make it work. You'll be okay. Just keep going. Now this first one is kind of like a pep talk in the it's possible to turn your hobby into a career. Some of these other ones I have planned, at least the next one is gonna be pricing and how you get people to pay. So subscribe for that. If you like this one, hit the like button, hit subscribe down there so you don't miss any of the next videos. I'm Resident Loser Jeremy. I'll see you guys in the next one.